Jennifer Bakke, the World Economic Forum is issuing the Lisbon Review 2010 this year. It was launched eight years ago to assess the Lisbon strategy. So tell me, how are European countries faring in this deadline year? Well, we're seeing that 10 years after uh, the European leaders uh, set the, the goal of becoming the most competitive economy by 2010, uh, that there continues to be quite a bit of variation, actually, in performances across European countries. Some are doing very, very well across many dimensions, while others are lagging behind. So, for example, we see that the Nordics continue to lead the way uh, in the Lisbon strategy. Uh, these are countries that are doing very well in terms of being very innovative. Uh, they have developed very strong information societies. Uh, they've been excellent in terms of improving social inclusion and also have had a strong focus on sustainable development and the environment. So these are very good things. On the other hand, we're seeing that uh, a number of other countries, some southern European countries such as uh, Italy and Greece and also some of the more recent uh, member countries of the European Union uh, such as Romania and Bulgaria are at the lower end of the rankings and these are countries that really uh, that need to make uh, improvements across most issue areas. Looking at the results from a historical perspective, has Europe's competitiveness improved over the past 10 years? Well, we do see that although it's clear uh, Europe hasn't really met its you know, lofty goal uh, set back in the year 2000, that there have been improvements across a number of areas. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the European performance compared with the United States, there has been a closing of the gap. Uh, Europe has been catching up uh, overall with the US. Now, we've seen, uh, according to our research, that there have been improvements in in terms of innovation, uh, in terms of you know, developing a stronger information society, also greater focus on sustainable development on one hand. On the other hand, there's been less uh, improvement in areas such as uh, improving network uh, industries, uh, developing and improving the financial markets uh, in Europe, uh, and increasing social inclusion. So basically what I would say is yes, there have been improvements, but Europe hasn't uh, really met the goal of becoming the most competitive uh, economy in the world quite yet. So in your, your view, why hasn't Europe made more progress on, in delivering on the Lisbon strategy? Well, um, there's been a sense that uh, the Lisbon strategy was very broad in scope and really had uh, too many things on the agenda. And so it was, uh, in a sense, uh, watered down. Um, and, uh, you know, in addition to this, uh, the idea was that, um, and, and a lot of complaints have been made, that the business community was not involved enough in uh, designing the strategy. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, that uh, communication to the public about the importance for reform uh, was not as good as it could be. Uh, so all of these things together basically made it very difficult to, you know, get support for and deliver on the reform process. Uh, and, and this is something, I mean, basically, you know, bottom line is that uh, the Lisbon strategy lacked in focus, uh, in transparency, uh, and finally, of course, in impl implementation. So Europe has not become the most competitive economy in the world. So what's next? Well, Europe's leaders are, are quite mindful of this, and given that this is the deadline year of the original Europe, uh, uh, Lisbon strategy, uh, they have now um, been developing the next growth strategy, which is called Europe 2020. Uh, and this strategy will take on uh, a number of the same elements of the Lisbon strategy, a, a stronger focus on uh, sustainable development, but still looking at things like innovation, skills improvement, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and so really what we would say is that uh, in order for this uh, strategy to be successful, they'll really need to learn from the shortcomings of the Lisbon strategy. And so really uh, an effort to improve communication, improve transparency uh, and outreach uh, in, in this uh, domain. Also, Europe's leaders might want to think about uh, having some sort of compliance mechanism that'll ensure that the reforms that need to be made at, uh, at the member state level really uh, do take place. So basically, um, if this is a well-implemented strategy over the next decade, there's every reason to believe uh, that Europe will get closer uh, to uh, meeting its, its really strong competitiveness potential.